Atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation are both abnormal heart rhythms. They occur when there is an issue with the electrical signals and pathways in your heart, which usually help it beat in an organized, effective way. Normally, the top chambers, atria, contract and push blood into the bottom chambers, ventricles. In atrial fibrillation, the atria beat irregularly. In atrial flutter, the atria beat regularly, but faster than usual and more often than the ventricles, so you may have four atrial beats to every one ventricular beat. Atrial flutter is less common but has similar symptoms, feeling faint, tiredness, palpitations, shortness of breath, or dizziness. Some people have mild symptoms, while others have none at all. About a third of people with atrial flutter also have atrial fibrillation. Both conditions carry an increased risk of stroke, usually managed by drugs, such as warfarin or a newer anticoagulant. This is why, whether you have atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, it is vital to be diagnosed early so you can get the right treatment and reduce your stroke risk. Either condition may require medications to prevent your heart rate from becoming too rapid. Differentiating between atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter on a surface ECG can be challenging. First, have a look at the atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is a condition in which the atria of the heart are affected by electrical or conduction problems resulting in a re-entry loop which causes the atria to beat rapidly, 240 to 360 beats per minute. In electrocardiograms, atrial flutter waves appear as regular, saw-tooth, patterns of small P waves followed by short or no intervals between them. In some cases, flutter waves do not completely reach the ventricular heart chambers due to electrical conduction blocks. This results in a 2 colon 1, 3 colon 1, or 4 colon 1 ventricular contraction rate that is mostly regular. Most cases of atrial flutter occur when the atria beat at 300 beats per minute and the ventricles contract at 150 beats per minute. Some patients with flutter waves may also have bradycardia because most of the flutter P waves are not reaching the ventricles. In some patients, flutter waves may appear and disappear spontaneously. On the other hand, among tachyarrhythmias, atrial fibrillation is the most common. There are about 27 to 28 cases per 1,000 person years. In AFib, the atria of the heart have electrical problems that result in a chaotic electrical impulse. Irregular production of irregular QRS waves with no P waves. In contrast to flutter waves, the abnormal conduction creates irregular, rapid occurring QRS waves, some of which are conducted to the heart ventricles through the AV node. This results in the heart having ventricular contractions that are irregular, variable ineffective blood pumping, and usually range from about 100 to 175 BPM. Now, let's summarize what we have learned so far. In atrial fibrillation, the RR intervals are irregular. Whereas in atrial flutter, RR intervals are regular. In atrial flutter, the re-entry circuit causes these changes on the ECG, while in atrial fibrillation, there are many more atrial foci that are beating simultaneously to cause these changes. In atrial fibrillation, the P wave is absent. Whereas, in atrial flutter, the P wave is presented in a sawtooth pattern or flutter waves. In the next video, we will discuss about atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation in separate videos, so if you like the video, please subscribe and support us, thank you.